The easiest mould of all to cast from is, this, is one with a flat back so it's got to open so you just pour it in and you've got a flat back and you've got the shape on the other side so you, as you can see you can have quite quite a roundiness because there's a flat there and all the others you can see are flat even this one and flat just plaster has been slopped into the mould with a bit of reinforcing flat carvings easiest to cast fantastically quick to cast so carving i'll mention how we how i carved the original pouring a mold with silicone how i cast one how i finish it with shellac and a bit of paint for uh, shadowing all of these here as i say flat amazing what you can do so things like picture plaques um, crosses or this is an arc little cottage flat you see so you pour the plaster from that side flat on that side silicone poured in round leave a hole pour it in that way rip the silicone mold comes off and there you have it I carve an original it can be in plaster can be in wax can be in anything basically as long as you seal it well and I always seal it with shellac but this original was white plaster just ordinary plaster of Paris casting plaster it's a powder you add water you make a, a pasty sort of just like thick porridge usually put it in a pour it into something like a lid carve it away um, use these simple chisels like this some bigger ones this for very fine carving and uh, basically you just carve away get it nice and smooth paint it so that you can see what you got whether you like it and then finally you put shellac on it which I'll show how you make up shellac and that makes it ready for casting and then you get two parts silicone this is just one of different brands but smooth on two part mix them together thoroughly and pour this mold happened or was made by pouring silicone over this with a dam there hot glue gun bit of plastic around here could be acetate could be this is actually from a fly screen thing big commercial fly screen had these strips so you make it water it's got to be watertight there because the silicone will leak out so make it very plenty of glue around it pour the stuff in right up to so it's covering at least eighth of an inch three mil something like that over the thinnest part so that's the thinnest part it's really quite thin there you can buy molds like that it's a good way to just to just to get confident you just buy look for silicone molds and they, there's places that sell them online but we can make them and we do and we can carve our own I just always put a bit of water in first and a rule of thumb is I, I just do it by by feel I get the plaster and uh, water in first just stops it getting stuck like lumps of porridge on the bottom so I get it to the consistency that it's still just pourable but not too thin so it's like thin porridge probably is a good description or like pancake mix and now this it's just if I want it this lovely brown and this here is um, is an iron oxide powder this particular brand uh, brand Cemex marigold color you've got about 10 minutes five minutes even on a hot day before you should pour it before it starts um, this is just plaster of Paris so it's gypsum gypsum that has been heated in our oven to 160 degrees and powdered so you get it ready made really to just add water and it goes back into a crystalline sort of um, interlocking little crystals in it and hard as anything so that's about right so probably about it's about like um, what you'd pour um, pancakes you can actually go thick as mud and then you can just squish it in and I have sometimes done that but this is so convenient to just sort of slosh around 
bubbles. Bubbles are your main enemy when you're uh, casting. And what I've got into the habit of doing, making sure that my thing is clean, what I get, in, I've, I do nowadays, whoops, no plaster, white plaster, please. Um, it's non toxic, by the way. It's basically non toxic. I mean, if you breathe a lot, it might line your lungs, but it's. It's just very inert, sort of gypsum. So what I'm doing is a little bit of rubbing. If you have a very uh, good vibrating table, that could avoid having to do this. But I find there's nothing beats just basically you're using your finger to make sure it's it gets in all the all the crevices, and you get to know your mold and where it um, where it needs the most. Um, debubbling like if it's if there's a nose you can be sure that it'll it'll um, you'll get a bubble in the very end of the nose which is a pain because it it makes a little hole like a sort of a pimple so this is basically um, this cast now this one I don't I don't bother putting a wire in for hanging I just drill a hole with this just a big and at an angle and you can hang it off that but for this little one I use a little bit of wire so same basic thing with this squish it round so I've just put it like this with enough of a loop so that there's plenty sticking out and I just stick it in there it just sits in there not too deep so it doesn't hit the bottom and show it the other side and now we're done and that'll be about a quarter of an hour quarter of an hour we can demold these um, uh, and trim, trim the back uh, and then we do this finishing which is really cool all I do is I get shellac which I make up from flakes you can get it in in um, tins but it's so easy to make up from the flakes so you can buy flakes of shellac which is a natural thing made by an insect I've seen on YouTube a village that just makes shellac and it, it's a whole village industry. Um, uh, sustainable, natural, non-toxic and it comes off the little shellac insect that, that's the, that is actually their little burrows. It's, it's a sort of hard burrow that they make on the surface of branches and it, it can be dissolved in alcohol or methylated spirits. You could use proof, 100% proof alcohol, whatever. And it dissolves the, the, the shellac flakes and uh, it makes this lovely varnish, a sort of a golden kind of varnish. So I keep brushes and mats, a bit of mats here, and um, I just um, put a, a thick coat. Uh, I'll show on this. This is a this is a off-the-shelf Chinese carving, which is quite cool. So I soak it in shellac, like so, and... Um, get it in all especially on the surface actually because the the the, the cre crevices will be the nooks and crannies is going to be painted to sh to shadow so this is just a real quick test it's thin but um there we go and you leave that for a few minutes and i've got one that i've already left for for a wee while so this one has been shellacked right with that in that way and now I will get some blue black. This is um, Atelier. This brand is nice. Blue black indigo. It's indigo. And anything that you like. Black is all right. And this is just pure acrylic. Straight out of the bottle, uh, out of the tube. Possibly with a little bit of water on the brush. Just to ease it just a bit. And then slap it in right into all the crevices like so and uh, I don't usually bother about the back because for one thing you don't want it to rub off onto a wall and don't want it really need to go there so then hand is good one movement see that one movement I can't do it again <laughs> there's my hand and uh, basically what I discovered was when it's soaked in shellac um, if you rub it with your hand a little bit after, after, after you've um, the paint has 
settled in the grooves, you can actually rub it to a, a finish that is as shiny as these. I mean, that is pretty shiny. One coat. It's obviously not as strong as the pendants that I also make out of the cement, which we do in exactly the same way, except we use cement and very fine silica sand and colouring, just like that, but this is green colouring. And you have to wait for about a day before you demould and cure it for about a week or, or two. So these are a lot dearer to make, but they can be... Uh, they can be outdoor ornaments. Anything made out of the cement, all of those green things are durable outside. These guys, not so much. You'd eventually the, the acid in the rain gets to them and they start to get pitted. And here is an example of a not so hard uh, setup for making a mold for this little carving and bone. So the silicone gets poured in there, goes right round the whole thing, 3D, and then I cut it open with a knife and um, here's the mold from that and it's cut open with the knife going right to the edge of right onto the edge of this carving the original until I can pull the original out and then I've got this and there's a pouring hole there and you can do pewter in this cast pewter which I do just wrap it around with a bit of wire like that hook it on stick it in stick it into the soft silicone and you're ready to pour hot pewter into it you can't do silver because it would burn it it's too hot but pewter yes and of course you can you can cast cement these these little green stone ones are, are green cement with sand with very fine sand um and yeah the green ones is what i've mostly done the 3d ones and of course the new zealand tiki which is traditionally greenstone. Uh, so all the best creating and let me know in comments and don't forget to subscribe. We're building up and there will be more.